Hello, and welcome to Data Science Wednesday. My name is Tessa Jones, and I'm a data scientist with Decisive Data. My name is Gabriel Gravelis. I'm Decisive Data's marketing director. Today, we're going to do a mock conversation between a client and a data scientist to illustrate what it looks like to have a conversation that allows for pulling out the different details that we need to do a deconstruction of a data science question. Tessa is going to play the role of a data scientist because she's our lead data scientist. Uh, I uh, have a cheat sheet because I'm a marketing <laughs> director playing the role of a merchant buyer. And my role here is to purchase products uh, from merchants to fill shelves of a global retail chain that has warehouses everywhere. My key responsibilities are making sure the right product is on the right shelf at the right time. So with that being said, do you want to do this mock conversation? Let's do it. Let's do it. OK. Hi. Hello. Hi, I'm nice. Stan. I'm really Stan. I'm Stan. Nice to meet you, Stan. Good. My Thank name's you. Tessa. Thanks, Jessica. Great to meet you. Nice you know, to meet you, too. This is my first time talking to a data scientist. And I got to tell you, uh, there's a lot of buzz about data science, and what I understand is that you can answer questions with data. So I was thinking about this, and the, the number one question that keeps me up at night is, what type of missed sales opportunities do we have? Now my role, I'm graded on revenue and generating revenue in our role, and I just have a feeling that across all of our stores around the world, that there's a lot of missed sales opportunities that we're not even aware of. Like we don't, and that's, um, if I had a crystal ball, that's the question that I would want to ask and answer. Well, that's a good question. I think there's a lot of companies out there that have a lot of missed sales. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a way currently that you look at that or analyze that at all? You know, I hate to say it, but we don't. We <laughs> have so much sales data and we have so much information, but we just have no idea. We're even going to start to understand what we missed out on. I couldn't even give you a figure or an estimate right now. So at this point in the conversation, I've just started a rapport with Stan. And I need to understand a little bit more about what kind of a person Stan is. Is he someone that thinks about detailed questions and he really hones in on very specific questions? Or is he someone who thinks really big picture, like pie in the sky? Stan seems to be someone who has, he has a very focused question that he wants to hone in on right away. So we're going to stay in that realm of things just to stay in the area that he's more comfortable at first. So he wants to know how we can answer the questions about how many sales he's losing. So in order to calculate this, we need to know how many sales we think are going to happen in the future. And we also need to understand how, what their data structure is like. In order to do that, we probably have to have some sort of time series forecast that tells us what we think the sales are going to happen, but maybe they already have that. I'm not sure. We also need to understand the data that they have that exists to generate that or to also tell us more about their inventory, what is present now. Okay, well that's fair enough. I think that that's com more common than you would think. <laughs> um, so I think in order to answer this question, we have to understand what sales you think you're going to have in the future in conjunction with some inventory information. Okay. What does your inventory process look like right now? Uh, well, once a month, the Knights of the Round Table get together <laughs> and we take a look at uh, last year's data for a time period. And we take a look at every warehouse, and we take a look at every product in that warehouse. Mm. And based on that one snapshot, we make our purchasing decisions and our inventory decisions for that, uh, for that time period. So now we have an idea of what they already do. And we also know that it's pretty rudimentary. It probably doesn't operate that well because it's not a very robust forecasting system to predict demand. So my guess is that what's going on is they probably have a lot of instances where they're either massively overstocking and spending too much money in storage, or they're losing a lot of sales because the stores are not stocked. So we know that we're probably going to want to build a more robust demand forecast. And in order to do that, we need to have a lot more information about the granularity of data that they have available and also how it's available. Transactional level data is going to be pretty key to have in a situation like this. Mm. OK. Uh, do you have a general idea of the specifics of the data that's used to, 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 to feed into that process? There's lots of data. But I can tell you that we can get down to the transactional level. Mm. And then the data is being stored in a SQL database. That's okay. what my IT guys tell me anyway. Okay. And then all of our reports that we're running are in Excel format. OK. So at this point, we have a good idea about the question, or we understand the question that Stan first came to us with. 
We understand the data that he has available, at least at a very high level. And I think that in my mind, I understand pretty clearly what needs to happen. Basically, we need to build a demand forecast and merge it with their inventory data to get a good idea of what kind of sales they might be losing. So we think we can answer his initial question. Now we want to kind of pull Stan out of his comfort zone and, and start talking about what the broader implications of data science can have on his business. And if I go back to my uh, locker in my brain about business knowledge, I know that generally for businesses like this, it's really important to understand how particular products are growing and declining because it really helps them to be able to drive to have higher revenue. So let's drive the conversation that way. Okay, if we take a step back for a second, would you say that tracking the growth and decline of products is important to you? It's definitely important. Uh, but it's kind of odd. It's so important to us, but we only talk about it about once a year. Once a year, our leadership team brings us all together. We take a look at all the information and we compare our sales and our decline uh, over time. And based on that uh, one snapshot, again, we'll make our decisions uh, for, the next, for the next year. Okay. What, what does that more specifically look like? What does that analysis or relationship look like? You know, you can, get, you can get lost in the data. There's so much, again, but when we analyze the data currently, we're, we're taking a look at the data that our merchants are providing us, and we're taking a look at those sales are, that are providing us. We would love to shift to a model where we're understanding what our customers are wanting and we're understanding what our customers are buying. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're buying what they're telling us to buy because we feel like those are the only options that we have. We really want to understand our customers Customers better, so we can search for products and inventory that that fits their uh, with fits their buying habits and, and what they want. So now we're starting to get a better idea of what Stan's bigger objectives are, and that's a good thing. We probably still want to learn more about that, so that we can learn how we can more broadly impact his business. We need to make sure that what we're going to do is going to be business actionable. So we want to incorporate that into our conversation moving forward. Stan said before that his executives meet once a year to look at products, growth, and decline to make decisions about particular product lines. That's not very often. So we already know that once we start engaging in data science, we'll be able to make it so that they can look at that much more regularly and make really good business decisions. However, we need to understand more about what they will actually do with those decisions. What's the action that comes out of that? Because we want to make sure that we can support that so it integrates really well into their business process. So let's lead Stan in the right direction to learn more about that. Hmm. Okay, so in these annual meetings, let's say that you have a product that comes from a merchant that is a big, big seller for you and you notice that that product is declining in sales. What do you do at that point? You know, that happens more often times than not. We'll get a product, we'll put it on the shelf, sales will be great, then over a little bit of time that, that uh, the sales cycle will start to die down. So when we see this, we'll do a few things. One, we'll take a look at our current product lists and see if there's something similar that we can plug in that shelf space. Mm. But if that product is taking up a lot of shelf space, we might reduce that sales space for that product and then try to find something else to fit uh, fit in there to, to measure uh, the sales and the profits from that, from that area. Okay, so we're now we're getting a pretty good picture. So let's see if we can really get to that pie in the sky idea that would really give Stan everything that he needs. Right now we know that we're going to need probably a demand forecast and a growth model, customer segmentation, all of those things. But everything that they do in the business right now is all past looking. So we want him to get future looking and we want him to understand how all of these things kind of come together. So let's uh, see if we can probe a little bit further to get his head into that kind of a space. Okay, so do you think it, that it would be useful to have something like a product life cycle as your pie in the sky where you have an idea of what the future general growth and decline of given products will be and have them grouped and understanding the relationship between the products within that group relate to each other and having a, a more holistic view of the products as it relates to your customers. That would sound absolutely amazing. I would love to have something like that. Okay, so now we have Stan on board with a model that, or a series of models rather, that will help him be both forward looking and broadly casted into his business. Now keep in mind that this conversation was very short and concise and scripted as well because it was mostly just to demonstrate what the conversation would look like and that generally these conversations would be much longer and more detailed. But I think it served the purpose here. 
So now, as the data scientist, I would go back into my think tank and build out a roadmap that's relevant to Stan. So we know that he's losing sleep about lost sales, and we know that he wants to be able to know when to switch project products out of shelves and when to, to change how much product or shelf space that each product might have. So we want to make sure to highlight those things in the roadmap, and we also want to show him what else we can offer for him in terms of what those same models will do in other areas of his business, and make sure he gets a holistic view of what data science can do for him. Well, great. Let's get to it. Good. Guys, thank you for having me on. Thank you for tuning in. Tessa, this was a great first conversation with a data scientist. <laughs> I'm excited to see what the next steps are. Thank you very much.